What's up everyone? Welcome to my camera collection video, 2020. I am gonna be going through some of my recent pickups in this last year. Um, a lot has changed since my 2019 video. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out here. But a lot has changed and a lot has been sold and a lot has been bought. So I just kinda of wanna dive in, not into great detail, but just kinda of show you guys what I'm shooting with now and the cameras that I really like. So let's get into it. First camera we have is a point and shoot camera, the Olympus Infinity Stylus. This is probably my main go-to point and shoot camera, although I'm not always using point and shoots. It's kind of just like a grab and go type thing. Like if I want to go out and I just want to get some quick shots, this is the camera I go to. Um, it's probably the only point and shoot I really like and that's why it's stayed in my collection for quite some time and I've kind of just got rid of the rest. I love how small it is. It fits in your pocket and you can literally take it anywhere and just get pretty damn sharp images for a somewhat cheap point and shoot. I think they run about like 80 to hundred dollars now. So maybe not so cheap, but still it's a great camera for that price. But yeah. Cue the sample images. The Olympus OM-1. This camera has been in my collection for quite some time. One of the things I really like about it is how accurate the light meter is. It has never let me down once. There's several cameras out there with built-in light meters, but this one, it's, it's never failed me. Another thing about the camera that I really love is the series of lenses that you can get with it. On this, I have the 50 millimeter, and I also have the 100 millimeter and the 28 millimeter. So if this is the only camera that you have, and you have all those lenses in your arsenal, you're good to go. If you're out there and you're looking for a good 35 millimeter camera to start, you can't go wrong with the Olympus OM-1. You have all those lenses, it's super small, it's not as big as those other clunky SLR cameras, but you really can't go wrong with it. The Canon A1. This is one of the first cameras that I got when I started doing film photography. I got it on Craigslist for about, I want to say 100 to $125, but it came with like this auto winder I have on here and a bunch of lenses and accessories and stuff like that. And this was probably like, I don't know, eight, nine years ago. It still holds up. You can find this camera almost anywhere, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay. They're all over the place. This and the AU one, they're very similar cameras. It looks a little bit bigger than a normal one just because I have the power winder on it. Um, this is something you, you don't need, but it's fun to have and it's easier to hold and grip. And that's kind of why I have it on there. But you gotta remember to turn it on and off from time to time. One thing I really do like about this is the shutter sound. It's just very 80s, like. And yeah, I don't know, I just really love that sound. Another thing is it has a built-in light meter and if you look inside, it's got this like 80s LED in it and it gives you your aperture and your shutter speed and all that, so. Cue the sample images. So if you're a beginner and you really want to jump into film photography, not a bad camera to start with. Um, really isn't, so yeah, on to the next. Canon EOS 3. This is one of my favorite 35 millimeter cameras. It does not have a lens on it right now, as you can see, because I'm using it to shoot this video, 
And that's why I love it so much is I can use my pro digital Canon lenses on this film camera and the autofocus works and everything works with it. And that's probably the main selling point of this camera. There are a couple versions of this camera in a way. There's the Canon EOS 650 which is like the cheaper version where you can also use your pro Canon lenses on it. You just can't use the autofocus, I believe. And then you have its successor, which is the Canon EOS 1V. And that thing is just a beast, but it's like really expensive. So I set up with the middle, the Canon EOS 3. The fact that you can use your digital lenses on it makes your images just a little bit sharper. And the main thing that people love about it is the autofocus. Most 35 millimeter SLR cameras don't really have that autofocus feature. And that's what makes it so special. If you really aren't into that autofocus feature, you can just settle with the Canon EOS 650. But if you really want that autofocus, grab yourself a Canon EOS 3. You really can't go wrong with it. Cue the sample images. The Nikon F4. This is very similar to the Canon EOS 3 that I previously showed you, except it's a Nikon. You can use your Nikon digital lenses on this. I don't have any because I primarily shoot Canon, but on here I have a Nikkor 50 millimeter autofocus. It's pretty sharp. Um, I kind of just picked this camera up just for the hell of it. I liked the way it looked and I heard good things about it and I really wanted to try it out. I did do a photo walk video on it where I put a roll of Color Plus 200 through it and it performed really well. And you can check that out here. A lot of sports photographers back in the day would use this camera just because it's like super quick and you can just burn through roll after roll after roll. Honestly, it's not something that I'm gonna be keeping. I actually have it up on eBay and I'm just getting rid of it. It's very similar to my Canon EOS 3, so I don't need two of the same cameras. I just don't, so I'm getting rid of it. It is a great camera though. If you're really into Nikon and you don't want to get the Canon EOS 3, this is a good substitute for that. Um, they're pretty much evenly matched. Nikon lenses on this one, Canon lenses on this one, you can't really go wrong. The Nashika N8000 3D camera. This is one fun camera. If you don't know about this camera, it has four lenses. It takes the same photo at four slightly different angles. And this allows you to like put those photos on one another and make this like somewhat 3D GIF or GIF or whatever you say. Uh, yeah, cue the sample images. The one downfall about this camera is it's so overpriced now. Like this thing is like really cheap plastic and crappily made and you could easily break it by just cocking the shutter. Like if you pull it too hard, it's done and it's broken. Just for the fact that of what this camera can do, it's kind of like gone up through the hype and stuff and it's super overpriced. Nowadays, you kind of get people trying to like make apps to make that like 3D app or recreate it digital and it's just do a good job sometimes, but it's just, it's not the same and it's never gonna be the same look as shooting it on film and then collapsing the photos. It's just, it's not gonna be the same. If you don't wanna like put the money out and get this one, because I know it's ridiculously expensive. There are other options. I'm pretty sure they had a GoFundMe for like another, it's like called Retro 3D Camera. That one's only like a hundred bucks. I know that's a little pricey still, but it does the same exact thing. So check your local thrift shop and shit. You might find it for cheap. Pentax 645. It's a 645 camera, it's medium format. It's not the 645N, so it doesn't have the autofocus built in. You still have to manually focus, but it's just as good. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite medium format cameras. I really love the 645 format just because I can get like just a little bit more photos out of a roll. I get about 15 instead of the usual like 10 with my 67. So I really love that. Before this, I had the Mamiya 645 1000S and that was a great camera but it just, 
wasn't for me. And the differences between them, I guess, would be like this one's a little bit more newer and it's got like digital features rather than the manual features that the Mamiya had. But overall, I've really loved this camera. I take about like three cameras with me everywhere I go, and this is one of them. So that says a lot. It's one of my main medium format cameras when I'm shooting the 645. Another good thing is you can get several lenses for this camera. My main lens that I have on it is the 75 millimeter 2.8, and then I also have a 150 millimeter lens. And I just picked up a 67 or a 645 to 67 adapter, so I can use my Pentax 67 lenses on this. Why would I want to do that? Because I can. Is it stupid? Maybe, but I can do it. So yeah. So I haven't tried that out yet, but I'm super excited to try it out. This is a great beginner medium format camera. And if you're trying to make that leap from 35 to medium format, you can't go wrong with the Pentax 645. It's very user friendly. It has a built-in light meter that's super accurate. It has all the setting displays right here in this little LED thing. It's like pretty much does the work for you in a way. You still kind of got to know what you're doing, but like overall it's very user friendly. Cue the sample images. The Fuji GS645S. This is a medium format rangefinder camera. One of the things that I really love about this camera is how lightweight it is. For a medium format camera, they don't really come as lightweight as this. You can pretty much take it anywhere. One of the bad things is it is kind of fragile and that's why it has this like little bar thing here that protects the lens because apparently like these lenses can just like rip off or like if you ding it, like it just comes apart and people don't really fix these. Once it breaks, it it breaks. So it is fragile. So that's something to think about if you're thinking about getting one of these. Another thing is it is a 645 format, but when you're shooting like this horizontally, the image is actually vertical. And when you're shooting vertical, the image is actually horizontal. That's just the way that this camera is. It shoots in portrait orientation and you kind of need to remember that. But I guess like when you look at the viewfinder, you can remember that so you won't really forget it, but it is just awkward having it be opposite like that. It just kind of goes against everything you know. Another thing is with this camera is the patch in this is so dim i mean like so dim and i'm as blind as a bat and i can i cannot see it for the life of me it's super small and you can barely like match up the ghost image it makes it super hard to focus and i struggle with it i did do a video on this shooting this in philly and i got lucky and i pretty much nailed most of the images but that's mostly because it was like really bright out and it was really easy to see but if it's not super bright out and the lighting conditions aren't there it's really hard to focus. And that's something I really don't like about it. And this was like one of my only rangefinder cameras at the time. And that's kind of what turned me against rangefinder cameras is because I'm like, if they're all like this, how the hell am I gonna focus? Like my glasses are fogging up and all this crap. And it kind of made me not really like rangefinders, but overall it's a great camera. The Hasselblad 500CM. When I first got into film photography, this is one of the cameras that I really wanted to get. Finally have it, and it's surreal. I did sell a bunch of gear to get it. I'm pretty sure I sold my Mamiya 645 kit with like three different lenses in it and stuff, and paid a little bit of money on top of that to get it. But it was way worth it in the end. The really cool thing is the history about this camera. Like, this camera was brought to the freaking moon. Like, that's, I can't believe how cool that is. Right now I have the 80 millimeter lens on it. If you're buying like a kit, it's most likely gonna come with this 80 millimeter 2.8 lens. I also have the 50 millimeter lens, which I really love. It's super wide and you're able to get those like really wide shots. It kind of looks a little bit distorted to me. Not sure why, but like I really do like the 50 millimeter lenses. I also have the 150 millimeter lens, which is really good for portraits and getting those like far shots. This is something I use a lot for the portraits, but I really do love the 150. Overall, I most likely just like leave the 80 millimeter on it and it does just fine. One of the things I don't like about the camera, I know it's a Hasselblad, but there are things I don't like. Um, the six by six format, that is the main thing I do not like because I wish it wasn't a six, <laughs> I wish it wasn't a six by six 
camera. It's just like not something I'm used to shooting. I'm used to like the six, the six by seven or the six, four, five. The six by six is just, I have a hard time framing my subjects and framing my shot. It's just, it's something I got to get used to and I'm going to get used to because I bought the camera. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. And also with like the waist level finder here, it does kind of limit your shots. So you kind of always have to look down or you can do like the classic where you like turn it upside down and look through it or you can get a prism finder for it. But right now I just kind of use the waist level finder and it's good for me. If you're in the market for a medium format camera, preferably a six by six and it's in your budget, I highly suggest the Hasselblad 500 CM. There are other versions out there that you can get, but this one is a great place to start. It's definitely built to last and like you'll have it forever. So it's kind of like an investment. Like they're not really gonna lose value. They'll definitely hold their value for sure. And they might even go up. But overall, it's a great camera to own and it's a great camera to have in your collection. Cue the sample images. Pentax 6.7. If you've been on my channel before and you've seen other videos, you've definitely seen me with my Pentax 6.7. It's by far the favorite, it's by far the favorite camera that I own and something that I will never ever get rid of. It's definitely the camera that I've always wanted and it's something that I always use. Out of the three cameras, this one is one of the cameras that's always on me. Earlier I said it's the Pentax 6 or 5 and it's also the Pentax 6.7. Those two are definitely always in my bag and always on my person. When it goes to large format, this is probably as big as I get. I don't really shoot six by nine or four by five. I usually just do the six by seven and this is my main camera for that. I did have a Mamiya RB67 that I kind of enjoyed and was gonna be part of this video, but I sold it literally yesterday, so it's not in the video. There's a wide range of lenses for this camera, but I almost always have the 105 2.4 lens on here. It's just like that iconic lens for this camera, but I also have the 40 millimeter lens which is really great for taking like those wide shots and there's like landscape photos that you wanna get. Um, I don't use it too often though, but when I really need it, I'm glad to know that it's there. I also have the 90 millimeter lens, but it's super close to the 105, so I don't really use the 90 as much. Um, it's kind of the first lens that I bought with this camera before I got this, and I just didn't see a reason to get rid of it, but it's nice to have sometimes. Overall, it's definitely always the 105 2.4 lens on it. The great thing about this lens is like if you're shooting it wide open, like in the daytime, like you're taking portraits, it just like has this look that you can't replicate. It's just like, I don't know, this like magical look about it. And that's what people really love about this camera. Also, it has this really cool wooden handle that's kind of like great for lugging it around because it's massive and it's super heavy. But when you're focusing, you kind of need a right hand grip if you're right-handed because you're focusing with this left hand so there's nothing really like hold on to. I have seen you're able to get like these really cool 3D printed grips here. I haven't gotten one yet but like I've heard great things about it. I'm super comfortable with this camera. It's my go-to for sure. It takes super sharp photos and I just love it. I can't say enough good things about this camera. It's just a great great camera. Cue the sample images. Last but not least, the camera you all have been waiting for, the one that I don't shut the hell up about and neither does everyone else, the Leica M6. I did have to sell my soul for this camera, but it was definitely worth it. When I first thought about these cameras, I did think they were overhyped and overpriced, but they're definitely worth the hype. After getting my hands on it and owning it for about like a couple months now, I can definitely see why everyone loves it. So on my Leica M6, I have the Voigtlander 40 millimeter lens. I didn't really want to get the Leica glass mostly because I couldn't afford it because I spent all the money on the body and I kind of just went for that cheaper glass. But overall, this lens has been killing it for me and I don't think I'm going to be upgrading or changing lenses anytime soon. And before you ask, um, the way I frame my shots, because I know that the Leica M6 doesn't have 
40 millimeter frame lines is I just kind of use the 50 millimeter frame lines and guess a little bit outside of that. And it hasn't really failed me yet. There are a couple shots that I wish weren't as wide as they are, but overall this 40 millimeter lens is a great lens to start with. I think it runs about like $300. That's what I got it for at least, it is used. So like if you have a Leica M6 or any of the Leica M mounts, um, you can't go wrong with a Voigtlander 40 millimeter lens. It's super sharp. I think it goes to, yep, it goes to 1.4 and it's a great lens to start with. Cue the sample images. More things about this camera that I really love is the patch in it. It's probably the brightest rangefinder patch that I've seen. And like I said earlier in the video, like with my Fuji, having this bright patch is like a huge benefit for me because I am blind and I, it's really hard for me to see. But this thing, I can focus like that. Like it's super easy to focus. It's super easy to see. And that is one thing that I really love about it. Another thing is it has a built-in light meter. I did have the M4 that I borrowed from like a local camera shop just to try out for a bit. And I did like that camera. I had the same lens on it. It's basically the same thing. It's cheaper than M6. The only difference I would say, like it doesn't have the built-in light meter. For me, like if I'm gonna put that much money out and buying a Leica, I might as well just get one that has a light meter. So I don't have to pull out my phone app or my light meter and you know, just kind of like go that extra step just to get the shot. Like why not just have it all in the camera? Because overall, like when you're buying this camera, you're trying to buy something that's like quick. And that's what I like about this, it's super quick. And with that light meter built in, I can just fire quickly and move on with my shots. Since I picked this up, it's been on my person like every day and everywhere I go. And this is the third camera that I always have on me in my camera bag. It's my Pentax 645, my Pentax 6x7, and my Leica M6. The other thing is it kind of put my other 35 millimeters to rest. Um, I know I showed them earlier in the video, but I don't use them as much when I have this. Like if I'm gonna go and pick a 35 millimeter camera, I'm gonna pick this. I don't know, it's just like, I usually just grab this all the time and this is my main camera now. I'm super happy with it and I'm, it's definitely going to last me forever. I know these cameras are really expensive and it may seem like you're never going to get one, but I said that I was never going to get one and that I'd never be able to afford it. I did sell some gear and all that, but it did take me a while to get this. I'm not made of money and I'm definitely not rich in any way, but it took me a while to get here and get this camera. Kind of like a small goal of mine to grab this and it feels good. If you do have the budget and you want to get a like camera, you really can't go wrong with the M6. They're definitely built to last. You'll have it forever and you can just pass this down and pass this down. You see most people have these and then they don't sell them. They just keep them forever. They're only going up in value. So like if you're in the market and you're like on the fence about buying one of these, just buy it because it's only going to go up from here. They're only going to increase in value and it is an investment. So like if you ever do want to sell this down the line, you most likely will get your money back for it. There are definitely alternatives out there that are similar to it that people will argue. And I agree there are there are very similar cameras out there for it. I'm not saying that this is the only camera that you should get and it's the only one out there. There are similar cameras to it that are more affordable. But if you have the money and you want the Leica and you want the brand, go for it. But for now, that's it. That's my film camera collection video 2020. I hope you enjoyed it. I kind of just wanted to dive in a little bit to what I'm shooting with currently, the new cameras that I've got over this past year, and it's constantly changing. I'm always selling stuff and I'm always buying new stuff. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all next time.